Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. Today I'd like to discuss what I believe to be the worst Eastern Roman emperors. I have carefully considered the flaws and blunders of each of these emperors, but of course there will always be a certain amount of subjectivity of any list of this sort. As such, I encourage you to tell me whom you think would make this list in the comments below. Now, without further ado, let us begin. Number 10. Arcadius. Ruling from 395 to 408, Arcadius lacked the strength of his father or the readiness of his son. He had no interest in his duties as emperor and was far more interested in matters spiritual. Instead, the consul Rufinus in 395, Eutropius the eunuch until 399, Gainas, then from 400 to Arcadius's death, the Praetorian prefect Anthemius, grandfather of the future emperor Anthemius, the patriarch John Chrysostom, and Arcadius's wife Flavia Eudoxia were the effective rulers of the empire, dominated by his advisers, who before Anthemius were incredibly cruel and corrupt. Alaric and his Visigoths ravaged Greece unchecked, which Arcadius did nothing to prevent. Rufinus, in 395, almost provoked a war with the West between him and Stilicho due to his pettiness. In 399, Arcadius issued a decree that permitted and required the demolition of all non-Christian temples. His positive contributions were that he built a new forum in Constantinople and settled Alaric in Illyricum. Though barbaric, Gainus and 7,000 Ostrogoths were massacred in Constantinople, removing the threat of our barbarian dominating the emperor like in the West. Instead, the Roman Anthemius was to lead the empire until 408, when Arcadius died. Though not a bad man himself, his ambivalent attitude to rule resulted in the deaths and misery of many others, with very little to show for it. Number 9. Constantine the Sixth, the Blind. Emperor from 780 to 797, the first ten years of his reign were dominated by the regency of his mother, Irene of Athens, and chief minister Styracios. A serial failure, Constantine the Sixth suffered humiliating defeats at the hands of the Bulgars and Arabs. Constantine's uncle, Caesar Nicephorus, was considered by many to replace Constantine. In response, the emperor blinded Nicephorus and mutilated his other uncles, disqualifying them from the throne. The Armeniac army revolted against the cruelty of Constantine, who successfully crushed this rebellion and threatened the survivors with unmitigated cruelty, and treated the survivors with unmitigated cruelty. He further brought the ire of his peers against him when he set aside his wife Maria of Amnia for Theodote, his lover, which started the Mokian controversy. Theodote's uncle, Plato of Secudion, a monk, protested the illegality of the marriage. Constantine threw him in prison and his acolytes were exiled. In 797, Irene, Constantine's own mother led a coup d'etat against him and had him blinded. Combining cruelty with incompetence, the successes of Constantine's reign, such as reconquering much of northern Greece and ending the first iconoclast controversy, were the actions of his far more capable mother. His paranoia brought an end to the near century-long rule of the Isaurian dynasty, leaving the empire to slip into an uncertain period which never truly stabilised until the reign of Theophilus in 829. Constantine VI was truly blind to his own vices and shortcomings, and had seemed to have inherited all of the worst qualities of his parents with none of the good. Number 8. 
Alexios the Fourth Angelos, the son of Isaac the Second Angelos, Alexios the Fourth diverted the Fourth Crusade to Constantinople with promises that he could never hope to keep. After ousting his useless uncle Alexios the Third in 1203, his reign with his father was one of total disaster. He tried and failed to keep the promises he made with the Crusaders. His unreasonable acts caused the mob and the aristocracy to hate him, and he was eventually murdered by Alexios V. This eventually resulted in the sack of Constantinople by the remnants of the Fourth Crusade. In addition, even before his demise, the empire was falling to pieces with the borders crumbling and local landlords looking to themselves for their own defence rather than Constantinople. He was a woefully inadequate fool, whose fantastic promises and poor handling of the situation directly led to the destruction of his empire. Number 7. Isaac II Angelos. Emperor from 1085 to 1095, he managed to defeat the Norman invasion of the Empire, which equaled that of the Norman invasion a century earlier. There his successes came to an end. He quickly proved to be an incompetent, weak and corrupt ruler, which in a system that required the Emperor to be strong and conscientious, proved disastrous for both his empire and his subjects. His oppressive rule and excesses at court led to the Bulgarians to rebel and form a second Bulgarian empire. His numerous attempts to retake Bulgaria all met with failure. Isaac's alliance with Saladin against the Crusaders was a dreadful decision. Not only did it lead to conflict with people such as Frederick Barbarossa, who had Isaac helped instead of hindered, might have proved a very beneficial ally, but he gained nothing from his alliance from Saladin in return. His oppressive rule came to an end when his brother, the ruthless Alexios III, blinded and imprisoned him, which later prompted Alexios IV to seek the aid of the Fourth Crusade. Isaac's joint reign with his son in 1203 to 1204 showed that even with an earnest attempt to set things right, his skills were well below the requirements of the situation. A situation he had some part in creating. The murder of his son by Alexios V Ducas left Isaac a broken man who died of grief and extreme stress. Number 6. Constantine the Tenth Ducas. Ruling from 1059 to 1067, Constantine the Tenth's reign saw the beginning of the Empire of Basil II start to fall apart. Robert Giscard pushed into Italy. The Hungarians started attacking across the Danube. The Turks practically overran Armenia. The Uzair's horde raided down into Greece, plundering everything in their path. The Emperor's response to most of these threats was to ignore them. He focused instead on civil affairs and trying to unify the Orthodox and Armenian churches. At the same time, the bureaucrats in the administration that had put Constantine on the throne were allowed to run roughshod over the military and common people. They pulled the funding from the military and did as much as they could to weaken the Dinatoi, so that someone like Isaac I Comnemnus could never threaten their power again. So serious was the state of the empire by his death in 1067 that Eudokia Macrambolatissa, his wife and the empress, the patriarch, and the senate decided that they needed a man to resolve the issues of the empire rather than wait for the maturity of Constantine's son, Michael VII Ducas. In the interest of keeping these videos down to a suitable length, the remaining five emperors will be in a separate video. I have been your host, Daniel Maynard, and this has been Eastern Roman History.